Greetings Helldivers, we got a pretty big patch today with a bunch of balance changes and in this video, I'm just going to go over the weapon changes and share my thoughts on it. This of course comes from the perspective of someone who is always testing things and has practically memorized a lot of the stats and mechanics of all the weapons in the game. And it's with this knowledge in mind that I'll attach some numbers and tables to make better sense and give you a better idea on the significance of the change. This is a Riken video after all. However, this won't be a very complex and overly detailed video because I'm in the middle of a very busy period of work. So this video is just something I thought I could do given I had a little bit of free time and had some numbers to share given all my testing from the past. So let's get it on, starting with general balancing. Armors with armor rating above 100 now also reduce damage on headshots. This is a pretty huge change for medium and heavy armor, along with that one light armor that has extra padding on it. Previously, armor didn't really make that much of a difference because no matter how tanky you were, getting hit in the head with bullets or claws spelt the same death sentence. This change should now make the choice between speed and survivability that much more meaningful. Moving on to weapon balancing. CB9 Exploding Crossbow. It now has a slightly smaller explosion, has 4 less mags down from 12 to 8, but fully restocks its mags carried with a single resupply brick. Its ergonomics or handling has been nerfed slightly and has a better stagger and faster muzzle velocity. Having only just covered the crossbow in great detail, the buffs to its stagger and muzzle velocity are great. It makes moment to moment combat a lot more smoother and fluid. However, the reduction to its blast area, magazines carried, and ergonomics I feel are completely unnecessary. This weapon needed nothing but more love, not nerfs. It needed an increase to its mag size, not a reduction to total ammo. Previously, it had a 8 meter blast radius. Now, it's only just 6 from my testing. That's a 2 meter reduction or 25% smaller radius than it had before. I truly wonder what the thought process was for this decision making. Last 99 Quasar Cannon. Increased recharge time by 5 seconds. Honestly, as far as nerfs go, this was about as good as it can get. This 5 second increase represents a 50% increase in its cooldown period, increasing it from 10 seconds to 15 seconds. This change further separates the role of the Quasar against that of the Recoilers and the Eats, where the output of a weapon is balanced against its ability to work under pressure. Given the Quasar still doesn't consume ammo, doesn't need to reload, nor does it take a backpack slot, it's still a very strong choice, just not overly powerful as it was before. BR-14 Adjudicator Full Auto is now the default mode. Its recoil has been reduced from 50 down to 40, which represents a 20% reduction. The maximum number of mags you can carry has now been increased from 6 to 8 and is fully resupplied with a single resupply brick. And it's now also classified as an assault rifle instead of a marksman rifle. If I had one word to describe these changes, it would be usable. These changes aren't stellar by any means, but it at least makes the Adjudicator a more usable weapon given the other options you have out there. People who already enjoy using the Adjudicator will just enjoy using it more now. Laser Cannon Slightly increased damage. Slightly reduced damage versus large volume bodies. In terms of the damage buff it got, the Laser Cannon now deals about 350 damage per second, up from 300 per second. That's a pretty sizable buff for free, but in return, its ability to deal damage to large volume bodies, which I assume are things like charger and spewer butts, has been reduced. This change further emphasizes the need to aim for weak spots on enemies and makes it more of a precision weapon. SG-8P Punisher Plasma. It has the same magazine and resupply treatment as the crossbow. It has an increased projectile speed, but maintains a similar range. This basically translates as its arc is now steeper over a longer distance to maintain that same range. Decreased damage fall off on the explosion, this is a welcome change since it was honestly very pathetic for an explosive weapon. Now placed in the energy weapon category. Overall, these changes just makes the Punisher Plasma easier to use. But again, the ammo reduction feels uncalled for. This weapon was already very ammo hungry, as it was, so reducing the total amount of carrot is just going to make it so you're always going to feel starved. Especially for a skill shot weapon that requires adjustments on the fly. Arc 12 Blitzer increased shots per minute from 30 to 45, now placed in the energy weapon category. This is a small change on paper that at first glance doesn't seem like much of an improvement, but in reality it's a pretty huge change. The main difference this change brings is against enemies that you needed more than 3 shots to bring down. This buff made it so in the time it previously took you to get 2 shots out, you can now get 3, 
making the weapon feel a great deal more fluid to use. I might honestly give it a proper go now after playing around with it for a while. R36 Eruptor. Decrease the number of maximum mags from 12 to 6. Explosion damage drops off slightly faster. You know, in my crossbow video, I said that it was ridiculous how the crossbow and the eruptor had the same total ammo. Well, with these changes, along with the crossbow changes, these weapons no longer hold the same amount of ammo, and the monkey's paw twists and curls in a horrid fashion. This change means the eruptor has a total ammo count of 35 rounds, requiring you to be a lot more efficient at placing your shots. The faster falloff damage from explosions also cuts back some of its mysterious shrapnel damage and reduces its overall lethality. This also means you might actually need to spend more shots to wipe out the same number of enemies from before. Last 16 sickle. Reduce the amount of mags from 6 down to 3. Honestly, not surprised at this change. In fact, as far as nerfs go, this is the best you can ask for. Its sustained firepower and damage output is still unmatched in terms of primary weapons and it still gives room for the Liberator to stand out. So, not too bad really. The Scythe. Increase damage from 300 to 350. Decrease number of total mags from 6 to 4. This damage buff is the same as the laser cannon. The loss in magazines isn't as bad as the sickle, but overall, I think the Scythe is looking pretty good as far as primary weapons go, especially against bots. The Railgun. Increased armor penetration in both safe and unsafe mode. Stagger force slightly reduced. So this change essentially means you can shoot charges in their armor in safe mode since your penetration has gone up from medium 2 to heavy 1. However, because the railgun has pretty sad damage, being able to penetrate armor doesn't exactly solve the railgun's weakness of taking too damn long to kill things. That being said, this change does mean it's much stronger against hawks if you shoot them in the visor. In unsafe mode, this change translates into needing to hold the charge for less to get the same amount of penetration. The reduction to stagger force, however, feels a bit uncalled for though. MG206 Heavy Machine Gun. Third person crosshair enable. This is 100% an improvement to the weapon, 10 out of 10 change. Diligence Counter Sniper. Damage increased from 128 to 140. This represents a 9.3% improvement which I'm sure will affect certain breakpoints. And it got its ergonomics improved. From what I can gather, the DCS now feels a little more snappier than the AMR. So if you are used to using the AMR, the DCS will feel familiar but a tad more responsive. Overall, a good quality of life change that came with a bit of a damage boost. The P19 Redeemer, that's the SMG secondary, had its recoil increased slightly. This effectively reduces its longer range burst damage capability, but also makes dumping the mag a little less reliable at sudden close range engagements. Now, because there are a bunch of just weapon damage buffs, I'm not going to go through every single one. Instead, I'll show you a table here with the damage changes next to it. Overall, decent buffs across the board with the exception of the Dominator, which got a slight nerf. I'm sure this will affect breakpoints somewhere if I had tables around. With the buff to the Liberator specifically, Something else was buffed by accident, the stalwart. The moment the pads dropped and I saw the Liberator had been buffed, I had a suspicion that the stalwart might also have gotten buffed. And sure enough, the stalwart now also deals 60 damage per shot from my testing. Previously, it would take 8 shots to break a resupply pod with the stalwart and the Liberator. Now, both of them take just 7. The reason I knew to test for this change is because I suspect the code name for the stalwart is Probably something like Liberator Machine Gun. I, I don't know, maybe. But in any case, all of you stalwart enjoyers, go forth and spread even more democracy with your free buff. The Senator Revolver also got a pretty sizable damage buff, increasing its damage from 150 to 175. But more importantly, it finally has a speed loader when you've run out of ammo in the cylinder. Rejoice all of you big iron lovers, rejoice. The Guard Dog Revolver had its damage decreased by 30%, this is kind of expected from a balance point of view since the rover basically acts as a free second primary weapon with no ammo concerns and is also pinpoint accurate. On the other hand, the regular guard dog received a damage buff by extension of the liberator getting a damage buff as well. And finally, burning damage has been reduced by 15%, walking back a bit of the buffs burn damage had received in the past. That is it as far as weapons and armor balancing goes. Overall, this patch brought with it some quality of life improvements for some weapons, but also a handful of really unnecessary nerfs to weapons that definitely did not need it. While the overall power of our weapons has gone up as a whole, 
The game has shifted in a way that we need to be more mindful of our ammo, since much of our weapon's ammo efficiency is now dependent on getting resupply bricks to stay topped up. Indirectly, this change has significantly increased the value of supply packs. I wish I had more time to get into the weeds and really start testing things out, but unfortunately, I am tied up with work and I am unable to deliver democracy myself. Hopefully, I'll be able to carve out some time for myself to play and continue producing videos soon. So, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Over and out, Helldivers.